Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Booth Makeover here at South Fellowship Church. So in this video, I want to show you a pretty cool little innovation that we implemented here in this setup um, because as we were talking as a pastoral staff thinking about how we want to make some tweaks to our online service, we came up with this idea which is a great idea, but then we had to kind of, you know, reverse engineer the equipment to actually support this and, and make this happen. So what we ended up doing is we're using another A10 Mini here, but not for streaming. Um, it's really just a, another video switcher in our setup, and it's giving us flexibility um, to basically determine what we want to put on our screen. Let's see if I can do that. point to it right here. This screen right here, this is just one of the two, actually we have three projection screens, two on the side, one in the middle, so the A10 Mini Pro is uh, giving me the flexibility to switch between our regular Pro Presenter output for backgrounds and uh, lyrics, then also our program feed, and I'll explain to you why I want to send our live stream program feed there, and then also we've got just a, a mirrored display. Actually, this solves this this solution we just set up here solves like two very practical. Uh, problems that we had we had to solve. So, hey, and this video is brought to you by Worship Ministry School. You guys are asking me a ton of questions in the comments of these videos about how to set th things up, how to build uh, these types of systems. Well, the best and quickest way to do that is to actually work with my team, and you can do that at Worship Ministry School. So click the link below, hit the Get Started button in Worship Ministry School to fill out the application, hop on a free strategy session call, and then on that call, a coach will be able to kind of assess your guys' situation, your goals, and then we'll see if our program is the right fit for you. So all of that info and plenty more down in the description of this video. Um, let's kind of let's kind of back up a little bit. So I've upgraded this computer to a new base model M1 Mac Mini. We've run it now uh, in our service for two Sundays. It works flawlessly. It's a very fast, snappy computer, and we're just running ProPresenter on it, and we've got three 1080p screens running from it. Our congregation display, our lower thirds lyrics um, that are keyed out for our live stream, and then we have a stage display now. We're using the DeckLink Duo 2 over Thunderbolt in the expansion chassis. Works really, really well. Love this setup. So this computer has been a success so far. If you guys are considering using an M1 Mac Mini uh, in your setup, especially just to run ProPresenter, I think you'll have a lot of success with it as well. And I've got this 24-inch uh, 1080p LG monitor. Also looks great. I think it was around $130 for this monitor. And even though it's 1080p as, a, as an operator, we don't need super high res there. We have a CalDigit dock underneath this table here uh, sitting next to the Mac Mini. So here are the two problems that we had to solve as a team in the past week and then kind of build the right tech solution around it. Uh, the first idea we had is we want to do kind of one of those pre-service shows before the service where out in our nice lobby that we have here, we'll kind of have another area set up where we'll have a camera and microphones so that we can have kind of a pre-service host, maybe your two hosts talking about announcements and such um, and just engaging our online congregation more. Right now we're just doing scrolling announcements in a countdown video. So we want to improve that experience for online viewers and then right now we also do our announcement video at top at the top of the service and then we're like well what if instead of pre-recording the announcement video if we're going to do that pre-service host time out in the lobby why not just pipe that feed into here so that the congregation you know who's who's sig sitting in here can actually see in here what the people out in the lobby are saying so they're actually seeing the the congregation needs to basically see our live stream program feed uh, they need to see and hear it at the same time um, on the big projector screens that we have in here. So we are just thinking through that, and it sounds like a simple idea, but then you just gotta start thinking through the, the logistics of how can you quickly switch the video feeds going to that screen on the fly. We do have a video hub, which is great, but it's also not really well suited for quick on the fly changes. It's better when you're just kind of configuring your setup, um, it, we wanted something that would just be a press of the button, like what we have right here, that would then change what's going to the screens. Um, and we wanted to be able to send our program feed up there. So that was the first goal we had. And then the second one was a simple one. So we have other ministries that use this space during the week, and they're not using ProPresenter. They just want the ability to basically mirror the display that they have here, um, or they can mirror or just have a separate um, display as well to send to the 
the, uh, the screens up here. And we realize now that we're using the DeckLink Duo for ProPresenter, which I highly recommend, it's a great setup. We're not using any of the, the system displays on the computer for ProPresenter. We realized though, we still needed an easy solution for people to be able to, again, come in, hit one button, and then they know they are sending the screen from the Mac mini to the projectors, uh, projection screens up here. And this is great, like if, you know, if someone uses Google Chrome to create Google Slides that they wanna show, um, or they wanna show a YouTube video, um, or anything like that, it's just it's an easy solution to be able to, to send the video feed over. So Aaron and I were just thinking, and it kinda of took a while, we we're just kinda of racking our brains around like how do we, what's an easy way to have the right, you know, the ability to send the right video feeds to these screens, but also to be able to change it quickly on the fly. And then this is the solution we came up with. I realized like, hey, we can just use another video switcher. And I kind of got this idea from, uh, I did get this idea from Life Church's broadcast campuses, because that's what they do. And I was kind of like thrown off when I first saw their setup. You can watch the Life Church video, go to the campus part, and the per person running ProPresenter has a video switcher, a little video switcher, a Ross switcher right next to them so that they can fire off macros that are really controlling what's going on in the room here. And in most typical you know, church setups, you're not having to send the program feed to your screens, right? Unless if maybe you do have an iMag system going for you know, putting live action video on the screens if you're in a bigger room. We don't really need it for iMag purposes. We just want it to be able to you know, send our hosts who are giving announcements in the lobby for the people in this room to hear it. And as I'm shooting the thumbnail for this video and looking all ridiculous, the thought occurred to me, I wanna emphasize that we are not gonna actually do true iMag with this setup because latency would be probably horrendous. Um, maybe I'll do a video about iMag later on down the road, but when you're, we're doing 24 frames a second uh, with our switchers and you know, there's a lot of audio latency going on, there'd be a ton of video latency too. So before I see a bunch of comments being like, oh, there's gonna be too much latency doing an iMag. Like, I know we're not doing that. <laughs> we're just piping in the video feed out there. Nothing happening in here during that time of service. Um, but I still like to call this kind of the poor man's iMag anyway. I got the idea from the Life Church broadcast setup, which is, it's cool. Cause you know, again, it's like Life Church, they have such a huge system and a lot of it, you know, it's not realistic for our size church, but then there are little elements of it that you can easily apply and that'll work well. So what we did was we got the A10 Mini Pro. We're not using it for streaming at all, just for cutting video. Um, and what used to be the computer out feed that went to our video hub and then was sent to these displays up here. Now that computer out HDMI cable, it gets converted to SDI too. It goes out of the, the program out or the HDMI out on the A10 Mini Pro. Um, of course, like we want to have it on program out. We don't want it on multi-view because now I've got this, this uh, ATEMS multi-view on the screens behind me. We'll keep it on program there. And then what we do is we send our DeckLink Duo output that has our congregation content into the A10 Mini, into one channel. That's this one right here. So you're seeing lyrics in a background, like what our congregation will see most of the time for ProPresenter content. Number two, we took our program feed and, and we had the flexibility to do this because we got the video hub and ATEM switcher over there and we can kind of route the SDI cables over, um, convert it to HDMI. We have our final program feed, what's being sent to our live stream going into input two. So we can kind of have this poor man's iMag, I guess you could call it. And then uh, input three is just coming straight out of the Mac mini. Um, it's one of the Mac mini dis system displays. And right now it is pretty much just mirroring what I'm doing on this screen. I could make it not mirror if I didn't want to. Um, and then number four, we're not using for anything right now, which is kind of nice to know that we have an additional input if we wanted to. Maybe if someone, I guess theoretically, if someone wanted to throw a laptop on here and put their laptop input into this. So I'm just excited about this. This is one of those very simple things that I'm like, why didn't I never think of this like before in the past? Um, I guess you would call this your presentation computer video switcher or your really your projector video switcher, whatever you wanna call it. Um, gives us really great flexibility. So what I think we're gonna do is we've got a couple things we gotta navigate when we're doing our host time out in the lobby and piping it, piping it in here. We gotta think through some audio issues. Latency shouldn't be an issue because again, we're not really doing iMag, um, so the delay that's gonna happen from what's captured in, in the lobby, going through the cameras, the switcher, 
you know, using our broadcast audio mixing through Ableton and then finally sent to these screens. And then also I realized we need to make sure we have um, audio going into the wing. So there's some things I got to think through. Um, you guys know how it goes. It's like you get an idea, you start building something and it's like, oh shoot, I didn't think about this variable. And then you come up with a new solution for that. So I'm kind of excited. I think this is going to work though. Um, I'd love to hear any, any solutions you guys have come up with um, at your church for a similar situation. So now it's great because on Sunday morning, most of the time, we're going to have it on uh, video and put one here on the ATEM for pro presenter content. Um, and then, you know, during the portion of the announcements at the beginning of the service, you know, if we're doing the host time and piping it in here, we go to two. So this is the camera with the lower thirds lyrics over it. So you guys can see, like, again, this is like exactly what's being sent to our program feed. And then number three here um, is going to be for the people who are doing Celebrate Recovery. Um, and this is an interesting weird little glitch I realized just happened is some reason it's like the ATEM loses the, the, um, the Mac mini signal. And then all I have to do usually is just go ahead and plug it back in and then it shows up again. So we're going to have to test the stability out of that more. Maybe there's a cable issue. I don't know if it's like when I'm switching to a different input on the switcher, if for some reason the ATEM mini like like or the computer just stops sending video for some reason. I don't really know what's going on there. So, like I said, this is not this is not fully done, but it's kind of an exciting solution that I'm I'm excited to um, to have here. I also want to take a look at the comments and feedback that you guys gave me on the last video. Um, so the most upvoted comment: the broadcast audio mix would benefit from being in another room, so you're not mixing with a headphone bleed from the live sound. Uh, yep. That's true. So again, the reason I explained in the last video, the reason we're not doing that is just kind of ease of use, keeping our team in one location. We might try to do some sort of like sound, um, you know, reinforcement solution here, or isolation solutions. And then also, like I said, I would like to have it in both spaces. So um, thank you for pointing out the thing I already talked about <laughs> in the last video. Um, yeah, Magic Mouse is the worst thing ever. Did I leave Mission Lakewood? Yes, I did leave Mission Lakewood. I explained that in the last video. Um, and then raising the back row of tables in the tech booth. Yes, that I totally agree. That's what we're going to do is have like a little mini stage right there behind us. Another comment I want to point out, this is a question I feel like I saw a lot, was um, using Dante with the M1 Mac Minis or Apple Silicon. Uh, correct, you cannot use Dante with Apple Silicon yet. Hopefully that will come out soon. Right now we are just using um, the USB connection here on the wing, which we can do because our computer is going to be close to the wing. We don't need to use the USB connection on the wing for anything else, but someday you know, Audinate takes forever to update Dante for things, and I wish they were quicker at this, or, or they even were just willing to put a beta out and be like, hey, use this at your own risk, and I would. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll have Dante ca capability on M1 chips by, like, 2030 or something like that. I also saw some interest here in the Churchfront Live workshop, so I'm excited uh, to do that. Hopefully you guys will see some info on that soon. So those were the main questions I wanted to address in the comments from last time. Thanks so much for leaving feedback there. And again, do the same thing in this video. Leave feedback on the setup, any ideas you have. I'm really just leaning on your guys' kind of hive mind uh, to let me know, you know what's a good idea for this tech booth setup. And uh, again, be on the lookout for an email if you're on my email list. Um, be on the lookout to get info about the live event. Hopefully in the next week or two, we'll get that out there. This week in particular is a busier week for us. We're going, we're flying to Nashville this afternoon to hang out with Belonging uh, Co. Church, the Belonging, yeah, the Belonging Co. Church uh, in Nashville to do like a tech tour with them. And then we got another excited, exciting YouTube video we're gonna work on while we're in Nashville on Wednesday, and then we'll come back. So lots of fun stuff going on. There's not enough time in the day. Uh, I just want to encourage you to check out all the links in the description of this video for courses. You can uh, sign up for a free strategy session at Worship Ministry School. Our team would love to connect with you and help you implement similar solutions into your church context. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.